Now for the main course, my all-time favourite, shepherd's pie. What's the secret behind a really good shepherd's pie? I would think the vegetables you use and brown in it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use leeks and onions and I'll start browning off the mince. You know, no colour, no flavour. I've never yeah. forgotten that, you know that? Yep. So... Got to have colour. Got to have colour. Otherwise, it puts that grey tinge on the shepherd's pie that looks it... greasy and yeah. cheap and nasty. We don't want that, do we? And I know you don't do cheap and nasty. Let me clear your peelings, Nan. Uh, All right, thank you very much. There's no nails in there now, is there? No. <laughs> don't be cheeky. <laughs> I remember your amazing shepherd's pie in that lovely little restaurant you used to work in, in Sheep Street in yeah. Stratford-on-Avon. So you never got food sent back? No. Mom. Sometimes they complained that there wasn't Mom. enough. Come on. No, I'm telling you. You, <laughs> you never, ever got a complaint? No. How long did you work at that restaurant for? Six years. Six hello, years. Dad and yeah. Nan. Oh, hello, hello Tilly. Tilly. What are you cooking? I'm going to make, OK, a sort of modern yeah. version of Nanny's shepherd's pie. Dad, shouldn't Nanny be doing the cooking because she's the better cook? Excuse me. Right? Mum, would you, would you chop our, uh, our onion, please, Nanny? Yeah. Oh, gosh, your eyes are going to water. Um, oh, no. no. Daddy, what's in this pot? <laughs> Sorry? What's in this pot? In there, we've got a delicious steamed treacle and date pudding. That's for supper, I got Tilly. i got a joke for you. Um, how do skeletons call their friends? How do skeletons call their friends? I'm not too sure. On the skeleton. On the skeleton. Tilly, come on. And, OK, so two cats are in a race. One is called one, two, three, and the other is called under trois. Who won? I don't well, know what to Depends who's the fastest cat. One, two, three goes under trois cat sank. <laughs> oh, goodness oh, me. <laughs> Tilly, why don't you make Thanks, a nice Tilly. cup of tea for Nanny? Do you okay. want me to disappear? <laughs> Thank you, darling. Bye. So I give that a little fry off, OK? Mm -hmm. Nice. Poor Tilly's jokes. They get worse. Oh, well, she's only having a bit of fun. Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. That's going to give that really nice spicy seasoning. Ouch. Thank you. Oh, that's hot. You OK? Yeah. Tomato puree in. You could put a tin of tomatoes in this if you wanted to. You could, yeah. Put that mince back in there once it's drained. I'm just going to put a little touch. I know you'll go crazy at this. A little touch of red wine. I wouldn't put that in. Really? <laughs> but why the red wine? Well, because I'm going to make it nice and rich. OK. <laughs> Reduce the red wine down. Yeah. And then start covering your mince with your stock. Now I'm going to bring that up to the ball. OK. And then get some yeah. fresh rosemary. OK. Like a little taste? Yes, please. Mm. Is it hot? It's a little bit hot. Be careful. Oh, I don't like the wine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Right? As it cooks out, the wine and the alcohol will disappear. It'll be delicious, trust me. Oh now, God. spring onions will chop up, yeah. and that's going to go through the mashed potatoes mashed that's going to sit on top of that nice... nice. I like that. ..savoury, yeah. delicious mince that's laced with all that red wine. Nice. So, spring onions into there, please, Mum. Okay. And I'm going to drain off the potatoes. Hello. Hello. Hi, oh, hi, Jack. Hi, 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 hi. Hello. Hello, Jack. Have a nice day at school. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're going to dry out those potatoes and then mash them. Nice. Oh, can I mash them? Uh, would you? Okay. Um, Holly, slice a little knob of butter in there for Jack, please. Yep. Yeah. So what was the restaurant you worked at then? Were you a chef? Cook. <laughs> <laughs> I love the diplomacy. <laughs> Were you a chef? I was a cook. Mm -hmm. Did you teach exactly you that. Not really. He used to help me when he was little. Right. Like you kids do. Now, potatoes. These are nice and fluffy, aren't they? Aren't they? And do you know what, Mum, look? Delicious mashed potatoes. Yeah. With no lumps in there. Hey, what are you getting at? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> eh? It's great having you back in the kitchen, Mum, you know that. Yeah. Huh? Seriously. Brings back good memories. Now, just... Why'd you do that, Dad? I just want to fork it to get it nice and spiky. So I want that nice crispy topping. And then, lightly grate that cheddar cheese on top. And that goes in the oven, literally 20 minutes, 180. 20 minutes. Jack, yes. can you open the door, please, Mum? That looks lovely. Doesn't it? Yeah. Even though you said you didn't like it earlier. OK. <laughs> Back in the day, Mum's meals all came with two veg. And this is no different, but with a modern twist. 
braised peas and carrots with a fantastic homemade mint butter. Shepherd's pie, glazed on top. That looks lovely, doesn't it? Doesn't it? it? And then the carrots. Oh, oh, seeded carrots. That's why I didn't put carrots in. Sticky spiced chicken wings. Jack, give us a hand, please, bud. Why? Because it's your favourite. Yeah? yeah? Chicken wings. OK. Right, let's start off with the marinade. Tamarind and paste in first. All of that into there. All of it? Yeah, all of that. OK. Good, in. So two tablespoons of palm sugar, please. Is that like heated sugar? Um, it's a really good question, though. It's, it's a natural palm sugar, and it's perfect for marinades. How many wings do you think you've eaten so far at the age of 13? Oh, well, I eat probably 50 a year. 50 a year? Yeah, something like that. A nice sprinkle of chilli flakes. Depends how hot you like them. Oh, I love what them hot. Hot. Uh, don't forget the girls. You know, they start complaining when you get them too hot. How come you love hot food? So... Um, I don't know. I surely love hot food. So in there we've got palm sugar, tamarind paste, chilli flakes, mm -hmm. some garlic, one nice tablespoon of fish sauce, please, Jen. This is looking really good. Isn't it? And then a couple of tablespoons of oil for marinade. In. How nice. Little taste. What are your finger, Jack? Mmm. That's really good. Right, wings in. Get your hands in there and start rubbing in the marinade, please. OK. So the secret now is to coat the chicken wings in all that marinade. Yeah? Yeah. How long do you leave them in here? Do you know what? The longer, the better. Cover that. Ooh. With limb film. Wash your hands away. Excellent. Good job. Ideally, marinate your wings overnight, but half an hour will be enough to get the flavours going. Right, so they're marinated now. If you take the tray out, please, love. Bottom one, thank you. And then we're going to put some tinfoil on there. Thank you. So, fold that in half. It stops them from sticking. And that will stop the wings from burning. So from there, get them really dipped in that marinade and try and get the wing like that and just sort of scoop it up like that. So get that really nice glaze on there. Mm. And then just, yeah, put mm. that on there. So all that garlic will roast. And then we've got all those wings beautifully done. Okay, mate, then ready for the oven. 170, 25 to 30 minutes. Yep. Good man. Excellent. Nice. It's hot. <laughs> Wings are in. Right. To go with my ultimate Southeast Asian dinner, rice cooked in homemade Thai green curry paste. For the easy green curry paste, roughly chop coriander, lemongrass, green chilies, lime leaf, shallots, garlic, and ginger. A glug of oil and blitz. The paste takes minutes to make, but it will keep for up to 10 days if covered with oil and stored in a sealed jar in the fridge. To awaken the flavors, lime, roll to release the juice. Next, season with salt and pepper and blend into a smooth paste. Heat the paste until aromatic. Add in cooled or leftover rice. I love using fragrant jasmine rice, but your standard long grain rice is great too. When thoroughly heated through, serve. Thai green curry paste is so easy to make, so with rice like this, it's incredible. But simply add to chicken, fish or veg to create a fantastic meal in minutes. Right, now for the green beans. Beans in. Uh, bring the water to the ball. What's the first thing I should put in there? Beans. Salt. Salt. So, nice pinch of salt in there. Yeah? So, make an amazing dressing. Two nice tablespoons. Yeah. Of the crunchy peanut butter, please. Why is it crunchy? It'll give it texture. And it'll be nice and sort of chunky. Green beans in. OK. Got the rice, the green beans. We're going to blanch them for two, two and a half minutes. What does blanching actually mean? Blanching means sort of part cooking. Right. OK. We're going to blanch them in boiling water. Yeah. And then finish them in the pan. Use the back of the spoon, it'll be a little bit easier. 
a teaspoon of brown sugar. In she goes. Nice. Is that a little bit too thick? Maybe, a, yeah, it yes. is. Let's put a little touch more soy sauce in there, let it down. Yeah? Yeah, that's better. A little touch of vinegar. Nice. I'm gonna get a pan on now for my beans. So, a little taste, do you taste it? It's so good. Oh, man. Mmm, wow. Mm. So if you get the garlic like that, and mm -hmm. just slice the garlic down like this. Just keep the knife nice and flat. Mm -hmm. That way you'll slice through it. But take your time, don't worry about the speed. That technique right first. Just cut it in half. Okay. With your fingers, good. And then lay the flat side down so it's nice and sturdy. Mm -hmm. And that nail there, it's not out like that. It's just guiding the knife so you can never cut yourself like that. Good, I'll drain the beans. Nice, a little tablespoon of oil. Get the pan nice and hot. And throw the garlic in, people. Good. Nice. Mmm, so fire the garlic. I can smell that already. Isn't that lovely? So give that a little toss. So when you toss it, push it down, push away and pull back. OK, have a little go. Push it down and gently, that's it. Take your time. Nice. So push down and yep. pull back up. That's it. Nice. So it's getting nice and golden brown. Green beans are drained and they go in now to the garlic. Mmm. Wow. Combination of green beans, OK, with the rice. Have a little smell of that. Oh, mm. wow. I want you now to yep. spoon the dressing, please. In she goes. Nice. How delicious does that look? Wow. What's Daddy's policy at home? No waste. No waste. No waste, but Now, smell that now. Mm. Oh, wow. That. It doesn't smell of green beans. It no. smells of... Oh, that's it. Oh. Thanks. How nice is that? Mm. Lovely. Amazing. Right. That's the rice. That's mm. the green beans. Now, I want you to sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on top, please. Nice and generous with the sesame seeds. That'll give the beans a little bit of a crunch. Now, all that's left is for your favourites to come out. Don't those beans smell amazing? Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Jack, look at those beauties. One for me, one for you. Three for me, one for you. Now I'd like you to sprinkle some spring onions. On top, please, mate. Nice and generous. You've transformed a very cheap and cheerful chicken wing. Yeah. Right, you take them over. Please do not drop them. Okay. Jack. Let's go, bud. Nice. This is my ultimate simple Southeast Asian dinner. Sticky, spicy chicken wings, Thai green curry rice, and fantastic beans with chili peanut dressing, guaranteed to get the fussies of eaters into greens. When I was living in France, I got to know two very distinct traditions of French food. On the one hand, there was the delicious haute cuisine I cooked all day in the restaurant. And on the other hand, there was the food you ate in people's homes, which is a lot simpler to make, but still absolutely delicious. My ultimate French-inspired lunch is very light, bright, and really takes me back to when I lived in Paris. It's my take on the salad niçoise, served with a delicious goat's cheese and pear tartine. Think of the niçoise as an assembly job of delicious ingredients brought together with a fantastic dressing. The secret behind my salad niçoise is in the dressing. Spoon Dijon mustard into a pestle and mortar. Some people top the salad with anchovies and capers, but in mine, they're the base to the dressing. We're going to grind that to a paste. And then get the garlic in there. Season well with black pepper. It doesn't need any salt in there because of the anchovies. Add a couple of tablespoons of red wine vinegar, olive oil, and lastly, flat leaf parsley to give the dressing freshness against those deep flavours. It's a thick, rich, substantial dressing. Dressing done. Now for the salad. Boiled potatoes, green beans, and eggs. From a rolling ball, seven and a half to eight minutes. It should keep that nice, 
yolky, creamy texture in the center. Once the eggs are ready, put them into cold water to stop them cooking, and this is a great trick to peel them. So much easier for peeling eggs when you use the water that they've been cooling down in. And the water will seep underneath all the shell, and so the whole shell just gets peeled off in one beautiful big layer. Pop it out. Now, beans. Mmm. Nice and crunchy. Season the beans and potatoes whilst they're still warm, so they absorb more flavour. A little drizzle of olive oil, salt, pepper, and just let them sit there. Whilst the potatoes and beans cool down, I'm doing a simple French open sandwich, which is called a tartine. This is delicious. First, I'm toasting baguette on the griddle. Lightly oil the griddle pan. Get your bread. Stick it on there. Take a pear. It goes brilliantly well with goat's cheese. Slice the pear into finger width pieces. That's the colour we're looking for. That dark, crispy texture. Now for the goat's cheese. Give it a season. It doesn't need salt, because a little fresh goat's cheese is already quite salty. Then a handful of crumbled walnuts. They go under the grill whilst I put the tuna niçoise together. My secret to assembling a great niçoise salad is to start in the middle of the plate and add ingredients layer by layer. If there's one thing I'm always missing at the bottom of salads is dressing, so I like to put it on the plate first. Baby Jim lettuce is great because it's robust and holds that heavy dressing. Then add firm, waxy salad potatoes and green beans. I like them to have a bit of a crunch. Canned tuna can be fantastic. I'm using a good quality one in olive oil, which has been drained. Next, baby plum tomatoes, which have a lovely, intense, sweet flavour. And then my eggs. That nice, dark, rich yolk. Beautiful. Yolk still creamy inside. These are little olive niçoises. This will work just as well with other black olives. And then your dressing. Drizzle that round gently. Beautiful. That is a niçoise in heaven. Now, tartine. Wow. Just a smell of those grilled walnuts. That is beautiful. A simple but very elegant tuna niçoise with a delicious goat's cheese sandwich. Wonderful. My vibrant and gutsy niçoise salad with that incredible anchovy and caper dressing served with a pear and goat's cheese tartine, too good to let the French keep it all to themselves. Griddle courgette, ricotta and mint bruschetta. For this recipe, you'll need a griddle pan, an essential piece of kit for that char grilled look. Cut thick slices of ciabatta bread. Drizzle both sides with olive oil. Season with a little salt and pepper and griddle each side until toasted. Then slice a couple of courgettes diagonally into half a centimetre thick pieces. Drizzle and coat in olive oil and season with salt and pepper. Sear on a smoking hot griddle pan in batches until all the courgettes are bar marked on both sides. Next, roughly chop mint leaves and combine with creamy ricotta cheese. Spread your toasted tiapata with dollops of minty ricotta and top with your seared courgette. Super simple and super tasty. Now we're going to make a delicious beetroot risotto. We need to get the shallots, just slice them in half and then just chop them like that. Okay? Okay. Now, have you ever made a risotto? Actually. Shallots, please, into the pan for Daddy. Add a sprinkle of salt and pepper along with a couple of crushed cloves of garlic. Once you start cooking the risotto, it's really important to have your stock gently boiling away. If we're adding cold stock on top of the rice all the time, it just slows down the process. Generally, you cook it a nice, wide, flat pan. Yeah. If you cook it in a deep pan, all the rice sort of cooks at different temperatures. What stock is that in there, Dad? Because that's a vegetable stock. Yeah, because you can't have different stocks if it's more vegetarian, can you? No, you can't def have chicken stock. I made that mistake once, putting beef stock in a vegetarian soup. Did you? No, okay. I didn't. Matilda. 
sure? I'm positive. I'm joking. Fry off time. How nice does that smell? It smells delicious. Rice in? That's a bit of a different rice. And this is El Borio rice. It's a perfect rice for risotto. Now, it's really important to sear the rice. If we were just to put the stock in without sweating off the rice, it goes all starchy. So keep on stirring for Daddy. Is this going to make a flambe? No flambe on the risotto. To go with our deep red beetroot theme, I'm adding red wine, followed by the first ladle of stock to get things started. Now we're off. Wow, it's giving it a cloudy sort of look. What's happening to the stock? The stock is reducing down and the rice is sucking it in. That's right. So the rice is actually getting nice and plump. When a risotto is live, when it's like this now, we can't stop cooking it. We have to cook it all the way. OK, ready for the next ladle? I'm ready. Good girl. Here we go. Ladle in. So we have to make this for literally 20, 25 minutes. And we're nursing it all the way. Beetroots. Peel them. Rub them a little bit of salt and sugar. Yeah. And a little bit of aged balsamic vinegar in there. Roasted them. And we're great. My parmesan. How's that rice doing? The rice is doing good. Now, that is exactly where you want to be now, look. Look at that nice, glossy, textured rice. So beetroot, I want you to put two-thirds of the beetroot in there for me, saving one-third for the top. Good. Sprinkle the parmesan in there for me, please, all over. Nice. It's like it's snowing. Again. And then we're just going to get some nice butter in there. The butter gives the risotto a really nice gloss. Look at that. Beautiful. Let that come down. Let it come down first. All right, get your spoon in there now for Daddy. Beautifully, there you go. Good. Wonderful. Shake it. Risotto should be like lava. It just flows out. And then the rest of the beer really on top. And then we finish. And then some extra virgin olive oil on top. There. I'll pick up the bruschetta. You take that to the table. Okay. Let's go, Danny. Mmm.